Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Sikla Saran Shir. Tonight, we're going to be doing Sikla number 49. Uh, we're going to learn about self-sacrifice for Hashem. So I'm just going to put up the share screen and we'll dive right in. We're doing Sikla number 49. Okay, here we go. The Talmud states, if Hanina, Michelle, and Azaria would have been tortured, they would have bowed to the idol. That's in Kisubos. Kitubos. The Rebbe spoke about this and said that the Talmud does not mean that they would have certainly given in. People have been beaten and tortured in every way possible without abandoning God. Many tales are told about martyrs in recent times who underwent untold agony to sanctify God's name. Happy are they. So Rabbi Nachman brings a Gemara stating that if Hanina, Michelle, and Azaria would have been tortured, then they would have done Abu Zara. Rabbi Nachman says that the Gemara doesn't really mean that. We know of many that have not given into Bodhisattva and a quest on their life and lots of suffering. Rabbi Nachman ends the Sikha with, by praising the people who had this courage and strength, who stayed strong to their faith in difficult times. So I think we should begin by the amazing story of Hanin and Michelle and Azaria. Um, I'm just gonna take a moment to actually say that my husband, Shai Sussman, has a Nach daily program where he recaps one parak at a time um, with Mufarshim. And it's it's really great stuff. So um, hopefully he'll attach the link to the bottom of this year for anyone who's interested. So this is the story. So basically Nebuchadnezzar erected a huge statue of himself and he instructed everyone to come and to bow once the once the band began to play. Everybody needed to bow down to the statue. So the band started, and the three Nevi'im that we mentioned before, Hanina, Michelle, and Azaria were there, but they refused to bow. And later they were informed on. So when Nebuchadnezzar heard this, he called them back to his palace and he offered a redo. He said, bow now or you're going to be thrown into this fiery furnace. So the Nevi'im, unafraid, told Nebuchadnezzar, in quotes, there's no doubt in our mind as to what we should do. Our God can save us if he so desires. Even if he chooses not to, you should know that we, we refuse to worship your statue. So when Nebuchadnezzar heard this, he became infuriated, and he told his guards to make the furnace seven times hotter than regular. It was so hot that the guards that had to push the three Nevi'im in they felt the heat and they fell and also and died. So, you know, when the three Nevi'im were inside the furnace, Nebuchadnezzar looked in and said to his servants, weren't there only supposed to be three people in the furnace? And the servant said, yeah, only three. And Nebuchadnezzar said, then why do I see four people as happy as can be? And, one, and the fourth looks something like an angel. So the three Nevi'im later came out of the furnace, totally fine, not even smelling like smoke, no ashes around them. And Nebuchadnezzar praised Hashem for protecting his servants. And he warned his nation never to say anything negative about the God of the Jews, because no God has the power to save people like Hashem did. So it's an amazing story. And it's always good to hear stories like this. It's like inspiring to hear their courage and their strength and than to see like the open miracle in return that they got. So it's a beautiful, beautiful story. So after I delved into that story, I like, you know, I don't know why the Gemara says that they would have withstood being tortured. I'm sure there's a good reason for it. I'm just unaware of it. Um, you know, they sound pretty tough from the story, but I was thinking maybe the Gemara was trying to empathize like with people who had been tortured and did cave in because, you know, it's very difficult. Um, you know, thank God I've never been tested in such a way, so I can't, you know, judge anyone who caves or anyone who stays strong, like, it's not, I was thinking, like, maybe the Gemara is just trying to, like, say, like, how difficult it actually is for a person that is tortured. But 
Either way, we see that Rabbi Nachman thought that the interpretation is not that they would have given in and abandoned their faith. So I wanted to bring in a few pieces that discuss sacrifice and maybe even suffering. But before I do that, I just want to say, thank God, like, as I said before, I don't know what real torture and suffering is. And, you know, none of us should ever know about it, of it. And really, like, my grandmother and grandfather, who were Holocaust survivors, like, they would really be best to discuss this topic. So, um, okay, so that being said, the first piece is actually another Sikh Torah piece that I would like to bring in, and it's piece number 12. So I'm going to pull up the share screen. It's on the bottom over here. Okay, when a person wants to become truly religious and serve God, they seem to be overwhelmed with confusion and frustration. They find great barriers in their path and cannot decide what, we're going to continue here, what to do. The more they want to serve God, the more difficulties they encounter. So I think a lot of us could relate to this, like at different points when we wanted to come close to Hashem and we would like, you know, we made a resolution. We are going to wake up early, you know, this whole week. And then like, you know, for what we, we had a wedding that night and it's so hard to get up early, you know, like all these difficulties and obstacles come when we like try to come close to Hashem. Um, all the enthusiasm that such people have when trying to do good is very precious. Even if their goal is not achieved, all their effort is counted like a sacrifice in the category of, for your sake, we are killed each day. We are counted like sheep for the slaughter, from Tehillim. The Sukune Zohar states that this verse speaks of, speaks of both prayer and sacrifice. So Rabbi Nachman saying, even though a person may encounter a lot of difficulties and have a hard time, we should know that all their enthusiasm and all their excitement about doing a mitzvah and all their effort, you know, like setting the alarm to wake you up early. And every time you like rolled over on your bed and snoozed your alarm, all of that, that's considered sacrifice. And it's, and he brings in this, this Pasuk into Tehillim. For your sake, we are killed each day. We are counted like sheep for the slaughter. And Rabbi Nachman saying that this is this is sacrifice. Um, when a person wants to pray, he encounters many distractions. Still, he should give himself over entirely to the task, exerting every effort to pray properly, even if his prayer is not perfect. For his every effort is like bringing a sacrifice in the category of and the quote, for your sake, we are killed each day. So um, again, Rabbi Nachman saying, you could see this with Tefillah a lot of times too, like a person tries so hard to have Kavana and to focus on the words and on every, and on the meaning of the Tefillah. And, you know, but like he's, he's finding himself distracted, lots of distractions. So again, Rabbi Nachman tells us like every effort, every time you're like killing yourself to just focus on these words, that also it's, you know, for your sake, we are killed each day. It's again, this sacrifice, this effort that counts. The same is true of all devotion. You may wish to perfect and sanctify yourself, but find yourself unable to do so. Still the effort and suffering involved in the frustrated attempts are not in vain. They are all an offering to God, including in the category for your sake, we are killed each day. We are counted like sheep for the slaughter. So Rabbi Nachman saying it's not just with tefillah, it's with all devotion. It's with everything. It's like all these times that we're trying to come close to Hashem and trying to do good. And we're just like, we're suffering from it. And we're getting so frustrated about failing time after time again. So he's saying still, this is, this is counted. This is this great sacrifice that we do for Hashem. And, it, and Hashem counts it as something very special. Therefore, therefore always do your part making every effort to serve God to the best of your ability. Whatever task is at hand, do it with all your might, from Eicha. Keep it up even when all your efforts seem to be frustrated and all your attempts in vain. Do everything in your ability, and God will do what is good in his eyes. So Rabbi Nachman is saying, even though you're frustrated, even though you're angry, even though you're seeing that nothing's coming to fruition, Still, just do your part. Keep the task at hand, keep focused, and keep on going forward. 
Um, so I just, so I just um, thought that was a great piece that really talks about sacrifice and you know suffering. And um, you know, I think people, I think like many of us can attest that sometimes the great barriers isn't like just not being able to wake up early in the morning or, you know, not being able to focus on tefillah. I think like a lot of, it's not just like temptations, I would say. Like, I think also it's times of difficulty. It's, it's when we go through difficult times and we're trying to have that faith and we're, we're like trying to look deep within inside ourselves to have this immunity, to have this faith and to not be down and to trust that what's happening in the world is happening from Hashem. So um, in one of the past Sikos Haram Shiram we did, I mentioned the piece IA. Um, literally, it stands for Aye Mekom Kavudo, like where a person asks God, like, Hashem, where is the place of your glory? Where, where are you? And um, it says in this, in this Lukute Maharam piece that it's taught, like, it's talking about finding Hashem in dark, and Rabbi Nachman says, evil and filthy places. Like, it's just an essential piece that shows us that Hashem is everywhere, even in these very evil places, even in these places where it's, like, hard to have Emunah and hard to have and to trust that, you know, everything's for the good and everything's from Hashem. So, but there's, you know, there's another piece that I wanted to bring in and I would like to discuss um, that really addresses like the suffering that I was talking about before. So I'm gonna be throwing you in the middle of it. So just to give you the intro about the parts that we're gonna skip, that this piece talks about connecting to the tzaddik and uniting one's whole prayer. So I'm, I don't really understand what this means, but um, I'll just repeat what Rabbi Nachman says on it. He says that he gives an example of like, that your last word of prayer should be united with your first word of prayer. And the only way to achieve this is really through connection to the tzaddik. Because the tzaddik is able to bring a person to their ultimate goal. So, um, okay, so now that you're caught up, as best as I was able to catch you up, um, we're going to read this piece inside. So um, I'm in the Kitzer Lukute Maran, number piece number 65. I'm just going to pull up the share screen. Okay, and we're going to start by three. Okay. When a person merits through the master of the field, master of the field is the tzaddik that we were talking about before, like connecting to the tzaddik, to look at the ultimate goal, he then experiences no pain or suffering from anything in the world. And the truth is that there's actually no bad in the world at all. Rather, everything is entirely good. So when a person is able to connect to the tzaddik and the tzaddik shows them what the ultimate goal is, then he's not, he doesn't experience any pain or suffering. He's even able to see that there actually is no pain and suffering in the world at all. Rather, everything is entirely good. The reason that a person feels pain when he experiences some kind of suffering, God forbid, is due solely to the fact that he's deprived of his knowledge, knowledge such that he is unable to look at the ultimate goal or purpose of his suffering, which is entirely good. So when a person isn't able to see, you know, the reason for his pain and suffering, and he's feeling a lot of pain and suffering, it's because he's he doesn't have this knowledge. He doesn't have this knowledge of looking at the purpose and looking at the goal. For if he were able to look at the ultimate goal, he would feel no pain at all from his suffering, since God's intention in giving him the suffering is certainly beneficial. Either it's to remind him to return to him in repentance or to cleanse him of his sins so that he will merit eternal life. So um, Rabbi Nachman is saying if a person was able to look inside and see the point and the purpose of the pain and suffering, he would know that it's either to cleanse him from his Averos or, or to bring him, to remind him to do Teshuvah. This being the case, a person's afflictions are actually great favors. 
And if he merited to look at their ultimate goal, which is good, it would be appropriate for him to be filled with joy at the enormous favor God is doing for him through it, through the suffering. So Rabbi Nachman is saying, if a person really saw what the ultimate goal was and what the point of his suffering was, then he would feel happy. He would feel happiness from having this reminder from Hashem to do Shashuba or being cleansed from his Averos. Okay, so now we're going to move on to four over here. Um, a person should be in the habit of constantly nullifying himself in order to look at the ultimate goal, which is true, good, and eternal. So Rabbi Nachman is saying a person needs to like remind himself regularly what the ultimate goal is, and he should be in the habit of doing this constantly. But this is only possible if he closes his eyes completely to this world and does not look at the desires and vanities of this world at all. For the only way to look at and to be included in the ultimate goal is by closing one's eyes, whereby a person closes his eyes completely to this world and even more presses tightly on his eyes with his fingers. Then he will have no pain or suffering from anything in this world. So Rabbi Nachman is saying that the way to achieve this, to have no pain and suffering from this world, to be in touch with this, with this goal, with this purpose, is to close your eyes. To close your eyes away from this physical world. And he even says, close it shut and put your hands over your eyes and just completely separate yourself from this physical world. And um, I was, I give this year, I was giving this year earlier to a few ladies, and one of the ladies um brought up a great point she was saying like you have to shut your eyes you have to close your eyes away from this physical world because a lot of the answers of like pain and suffering you're not going to find the answers on the outside you're not going to find why good people suffer or any of these you know any of these difficult questions that we have on the outside a person needs to look within and a person really needs to connect to the inner truth that's there Okay, it is impossible. Um, okay, it is impossible, however, to remain permanently in this state of self nullification, since a person would thereby cease to be human. So, Rabbi Nachman saying it's very hard to stay, he mentions here like a you know, valid point, it's very hard to stay in this higher plane in this plane of um, self nullification where you know what the purpose of the world is and like you're not feeling the pain and the suffering and the difficulties that you're going through. Therefore, self nullification must necessarily be in the manner of running and returning. That's from Yifaskel. Repeatedly entering and leaving the state. Then when a person returns to his normal consciousness, a residual light from his state of self nullification shines a sweet, lovely glimmer of godliness into his mind, which cannot possibly be described to anyone else. And this glimmer generates great joy. So Rabbi Nachman saying in this paragraph over here that it's extremely hard to stay high in this elated state. And that's, and Rabbi Nachman recommends, that's why we always have to be in this balance of running and returning, running to Hashem and then returning back to like, you know, our regular human nature, human selves. And um, he says that when we do run to Hashem and then come back to regular life, let's say, so then, um, like, at that point, like, Hashem leaves us with this, like, residual light from this higher elated state that we were just in, from this, like, moment of us, from this moment of closeness, we get this, this light, we get this, kind of glow that stays with us and, you know, helps us through the challenges. And he actually says, this glimmer generates great joy. This glow, this, this light that we got from being in this higher state, in this time, in this state of Dvikas, this brings us, you know, true Simcha. Through this joy, new Torah ideas and insights are elicited by which a person can encourage himself through all the suffering and tribulations he goes through, God forbid. 
and he will merit to experience and to feel in this world something like the world to come. So Rabbi Nachman ends this that through this joy, a person is able to get new Torah ideas, new Kedushim, new insights. And through that, a person can encourage himself through all the suffering and pain that he's going through, God forbid. And, and he'll, merit, he'll merit, he'll be Zopa to experience in this world something like something from Ulam Haba. So um, I'm going to stop the share. So it's very, very powerful, amazing piece. Um, I love this concept of running and returning, like, because I think we all go through that. We all go through these times where we feel very close to Hashem and we feel connected to Hashem. And then we go through these times where we're just like back to our regular selves, you know, but like these, these times of, of Dvikas, they still stay with us at our, at our low points, you know, at our returning stages. Um, but I think this last piece, like, really puts a real emphasis on the reasons why people suffer and the good in the suffering. And, you know, like, it's, there's a purpose. There's purpose in everything. And it's just always good to be reminded of that. So um, I just want to give us all a bracha that we should close our eyes shut against this crazy world and see the goal of life and see Yad Hashem and everything. So thanks, everyone, for bearing with me. And have a wonderful night.